Governance globally is going through a huge change. I mean, we've seen it in Europe post-GFC. Uh, we've seen it with the Brexit vote. We're, we're seeing it with the US election. We're seeing it with some of the elections around the world, the Philippines. And we're in a great place, even though we, there's been a lot of suffering here, um, to actually think about, well, what does governance look like in the future? And I think the push is towards the local level and it will require people to get involved. And that's not always that easy. The yeah, representative democracy is defined primarily by people voting. So every so often, three, four, five years, they come out, they have a vote and they select a candidate and then they go back to sleep generally for three, four, five years. Participatory democracy is where people are engaged on a consistent basis, which means they are making decisions and they're involved with what is happening in their local community or city on a regular basis. And what it does, it actually brings people into the conversation so they're actually part of it and then they're generally more interested. The problem we're having at the moment with representative democracy is this kind of electoral fatigue where people believe they turn up to vote, um, express their, their mandate and then nothing really sort of happens or they don't really feel part of anything that happens after that and slowly they get turned off. I mean some places are um, working on citizens' juries, for example, where they actually select a random sample from the population, maybe between 30 and 60 people, and they actually set them tasks and problems to work out. So you've actually got a broader range of diversity, and actually you're getting people more interested in things. So that can, that can work quite well. Um, some places have tried participatory budgeting, where they actually look after the city's budget themselves, and it might be a small portion of that, or a portion for their particular area, but it's actually so instead of saying, oh, well, these guys keep putting rates up or they don't know what they're doing, people actually get to see the trade-offs and the difficulty between, well, if you cut spending here, then this has an impact. If you put up spending here, you can't spend it on this. Um, and there was a, a good example in Queensland, I think about 18 months ago, where they had to, they had to shave $50 billion off their state budget. And so what they did is they developed an online budget calculator and it had about 20 different levers in it, and people could actually go in and they could move the levers left and right, and it adjusted the budget. So they could actually see, okay, we've got to cut $50 billion, how do we do it? And the feedback from that is that people realized how extremely difficult it was, because nobody really wanted to cut anything. But it's a very, very complex process. So I think the more we get people involved in it, the more people will understand, and then people learn to make good decisions. Instead of just sort of saying, every three years I'll turn up, Oh, Joe Bloggs or Jill Bloggs, yep, tick. And then I'll complain about you for three years. <laughs> and the whole process goes on until, you know, basically you just get the same people elected the whole time. And people don't even stand for election because they lose interest as well. I think our problem here is that we have just been so busy. And we basically were fighting fires for the first 18 months and we just haven't had time to get around to it. The amount of decisions we've made, I mean, I'd love someone to go through and work out how many decisions we've had to make. There just hasn't been time. So certainly in, in the next um, term, that's definitely going to be a priority. Um, one, in devolving more decision-making to, to the community, but actually giving them the tools to do it. I mean, to give you an example, one of the things we did early on is, um, it's a very small thing, but the Scarborough paddling pool. So we said to them, OK, look, the community knows what they want in a paddling pool. We don't need to be getting involved in this. So we gave them the budget, and the community board got together with the community, formed a working group, and they sorted out the design themselves. Now, I think they went a bit over budget, but the fact is that they dealt with it. In terms of the, the governance and decision-making processes, it was very command and control after the earthquake, and we have tried very hard to change that. So the Emergence of Regenerate Christchurch, Development Christchurch, and the Crown's entity at Tarkaro was kind of the next phase. It's not perfect. I mean, I think many of us would have liked a single agency right at the beginning, with all stakeholders involved. And the difficulty is, is that the, the interests of central government, local government and the community are not often aligned perfectly. But I think we're certainly on that road. And I think when it comes to looking at the red zone and suburban regeneration, that will come back to the local level. You know, the community's had to fight a lot, you know, with its insurance claims, there's still people fighting. Um, and to actually give them more decision making and ultimately power, will probably help the restoration of their general well-being. The mental health issue, and we see it in war zones, it has huge long-term impacts. And if people feel disempowered, um, one, they become disengaged, um, and it does affect their well-being. So the more that we can say to people, get involved in this, here's some budget, you make it happen. I mean, the more people realise that they actually do have the power to influence, 
the more they're likely to get involved. It's when they don't think it makes a difference that they don't bother getting involved. And that's why I think we don't see a, a huge amount of interest in, in local body elections, to be fair. I mean, it's a tough job um, in some respects. But I think this is, we're in an, a, a huge shift in many different areas, political and economic. So there is an opportunity to reshape things here. And I think Christchurch can be a great example for that.